These are two absolutely insane custom mountain bikes. This is a downhill bike and this is a trail bike. That's not that uncommon. Plenty of people have mountain bikes custom built to their specifications, but these bikes are not owned by plenty of people. They're owned by Nico Mullally, who is a professional downhill racer competing at the highest level. He has been sponsored by the likes of Trek, YT, Intense. Nico could ride for whoever he wants, but he instead gave up the bikes the paycheck, the security, and all the other things that come along with riding for a big bike company to spend his own money building this. And today we're gonna find out what would possess him to do that. I'm Nico Mullally, and I'm a professional mountain biker, specifically a professional downhill mountain bike racer. I've raced for various race teams my whole career, and I learned a lot from riding for all those pro teams, and I've become super passionate about mountain bikes and the design of it. And now you don't have a sponsor. Now that burden's on you. Marketing, race team, the engineering team, I'm wearing all those hats. And so it's fun for you. It's super fun. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of hard work involved, but it's super gratifying when it all comes together. I guess the negative side is there's a lot on my plate, but the positive is that I can do it exactly the way I want to. Is that scary? I wouldn't say it's scary, I'd say it's exciting. Definitely last year or the first year of the project, I had been finding out a lot of the failures with the bike. So I had cracked a lot of frames and at one point I'd gotten to my last spare and had to race a World Cup with a cracked frame. And that was pretty scary. So after you kind of thought it through and like actually built a frame, what was the first one like? I actually have it in the van, do you want to see it? Yeah. This is the first one. Holy crap. You can see these bolts are like what well, you could buy at Ace. I know. It literally is hardware store stuff. Yeah. And because it was the first one, I didn't want to spend a ton of money on those fine details before I knew that it worked. This was just like a proof of concept. Yep. And then once that I knew that it, it worked well, then I went back to all the refinements. These are the other ones, huh? Yeah. So this is the one that had developed the little stress crack and it made it just to the finish line on my final run. So then this was the first steel one I made. It's made of Reynolds steel. Wait, this is steel? Yeah, this one's pretty heavy. How many downhill racers at your level are racing steel bikes? No, none of them. I was the only one at the last race on a steel bike. So wouldn't you think maybe there's a reason they don't? Yeah, but I wonder if that reason isn't for performance, it's for the brand they're riding for. So because you have the freedom to do whatever you want, like why not? Exactly, it's, it's an experiment and I'll learn something from it. It's very comfortable, it has some positive attributes. My teammate Asa said it best, my dad would really like this bike. But it also has some negative attributes. That comfort also comes with a price of efficiency and flow. So this one over here looks like it's steel too. Is this like the next version? Yeah, this is the most refined steel bike I made. It has a non-adjustable straight head tube to save weight. And then also the shock mount is a 3D printed steel mount that's in the position that I preferred with no adjustability. Why are we only seeing half frames? Like where's the rest of it? So these are just front triangles or main frames and I have the rear ends up here, I can show you. This is made of plastic. Yeah, so this is a 3D printed proof of what my rear end would look like. We started with a aluminum one, like I showed you on the first bike. Yeah. And when you have a lot of pieces welded together, everything can kind of move a little bit when it gets heated up. So I have the idea to make it out of carbon fiber and there's a lot of expensive upfront tooling to make carbon fiber parts. So before you open that mold, they send you a 3D printed proof of what it'll look like and you can even bolt it up and fit it onto your bike. It's still like, you can't just ride it. And so you have to look at it and say, yeah, here's 10 grand or whatever, right? 25. Oh. So this is then the finished version. It's a carbon fiber chain stay and seat stay. Making all the moving parts lighter makes your suspension feel better because you don't have the inertia of the weight moving back and forth with your suspension. And when you're racing, you're going for marginal gains. So I don't yeah. know if it's worth 25 grand better ride, but it definitely helps. You 
do not see a bike that looks like this every day. Yeah, this is the one I've been racing this season. This is an aluminum frame. It's not changed a whole lot from the very first one as far as ride quality, because I took notes from every bike I've ever raced. The construction's way better. The stiffness of the chassis is what I want. And if it's easier to make, it's easier to make it precise and repeatable. Right, you need more than one. You don't wanna be in that situation where you had the crack tube that you were forced to race, right? Yeah, exactly. As a racer, we have lots of spares and really handmade bikes have that handmade factor where they could all be a little different, but to try to make them as precise and consistent from frame to frame as possible is more getting into the manufacturing process than actually the frame anymore. So you've pretty much made like the production ready bike. And I see over here, it says Frameworks. What's Frameworks? Frameworks is the name of the project. In the beginning, I was kind of anti-brand. I didn't want a name or logo to overpower the substance of the project. So nobody can buy these bikes, but it almost has like a bike company surrounding it. But you're the only person who's allowed to ride them. Yeah, if you want to have a, a racing machine, it needs to have all those things. It's a lot easier to go to the race with Frameworks Racing next to your name than unattached. Has it given you the benefits that you were hoping for? Absolutely, this project has been a dream for me to work on. I absolutely love to dive into all these details of the bike and working with brands, it's always a compromise. With this, it's all on me and if it's good, I can be proud and if it's bad, I'm the only one to blame. And actually the downhill bike isn't the only bike that Frameworks makes anymore. This is the first iteration of a trail bike for me, and I'm really happy with it. It's pretty heavy. It uses a lot of the same tubing as the downhill bike. It's 39 pounds as it sits. So I think I can refine it, make it a little lighter. But overall, the ride quality is awesome. Like it goes downhill, more like a downhill bike than any other trail bike I've ever ridden. As downhill riders, we spend way more time riding trail bikes than we do our downhill bikes. The majority of our training, whether it be base miles or just getting intervals in. We ride these trail bikes, and if I was spending so much time per week riding one, I thought it'd be pretty cool to make my version of the trail bike. So you have a downhill bike that you like, you've refined the rear triangle, you've got it so you can make it consistently, and you've built an enduro bike that's pretty much ready to go. What does the future hold? Like, are you trying to build a bike company or? I wouldn't say my priority with starting this was to sell bikes. I wanted to make bikes that I was proud of, bikes that I love to ride. And if it was up to me, I'd never sell anything. You could just keep doing experiments and tinkering with my bikes. But I think to be able to sustain, keep doing that, in the future, we will offer some small runs of bikes and it'd be awesome to see other people out enjoying the bikes the same way I do. So there you have it. Nico gave up having a bike sponsor and everything that comes along with it to start a bike company that only makes bikes for Nico. I feel like that's what everybody says they're gonna do when they're just talking. If I, if I was a pro downhill racer, I'd dare. And then they don't do it. Nico's doing it and he's also opened two bike parks. We're here at Canuga and there's also Rock Creek. He's also got a YouTube channel documenting everything about frameworks. I'm gonna link to it in the description. I hope you found this fascinating Fascinating. If you didn't learn anything today, I hope you at least found this entertaining. Thanks for riding with me today, and I'll see you next time.